There we go. Okay, so um, you know, we've been talking about doing this for a minute. Yes. And we Long are finally here. Yes. So, okay, so first things first, you know, um, I don't know if you can see the name, but I have on um, my Balenciaga shirt, right, that I got from Saks. And okay. Because, because I'm going real Kim K with it. So this is this is this is the mood right now, you know, because okay. I understand that, you know, the, the person that we will be discussing is very materialistic right. and they know prices. So therefore, I had to dress accordingly. So even though it's Balenciaga and I'm against Balenciaga and you know what I'm saying, everything they do, but I just had this shirt and I was like, I paid too much for this shirt to just throw it away. Right. So Maybe right. they'll do a statement and then come out and they'll say we apologize and then I'm back lit with all my Balenciaga. But today is in honor of the Kim K moment. So um Okay. Okay, so let's let's just get into it, okay? Because we're not gonna do the whole jar again. We just gonna get right into it. So right. I recorded a video that you that you seen. Um and I re as you've seen, like once I showed you, I've been recording a lot of stuff. I have some interviews with my father, I have different stuff that I talked about on my YouTube. It's right. my my family history has never been a secret to the public, right? But right. in the same token, I just don't feel that I need to utilize that for clout or right. you know, try to throw it in people's faces, right? Right. Because right. for me, it brings on trauma, you know. That's and right. Like anybody that follow me, they know that I'm big on trauma. I'm big on, you know what I'm saying, shadow work. And to see that kind of stuff really brought up right. trauma that I held on for years. So even my um, outburst may be from that little girl that's always been like, what the fuck? But couldn't right. really say that, you know? So, right. right. So anyway, so I'm, I'm, I made a video um, a while ago because then I was off of it because um, I got phone calls to my mom, but like, why she hate me? Why, why this? I was like, I'm off of that. We ain't, we on to something else. Cause really my followers, when I would post content about my family, they didn't right. really care. Like we here for vegan food. We here for expat. We here for your life. Like girl, I don't care nothing about this, you know? So, um, so I just kind of backed off because it wasn't relevant to my brand. Right. right. And so, um, you know, one day I just happened to be chilling and I woke up and I seen a message uh, mm -hmm. A comment from Tonisa from an old video, right? And so okay. I'm like, girl, go sit your ass down. So I called my father, and my father said, you know what? This is, this is, this is what you want to do. Now, he gave, he know I've been asking for the green light for years, but not for me, right. for him, right? Right. And so, right. um, you know, to make a long story short, she commented, and I clapped back, right? And my clapback was too personal because the things right. that we know only you have to be in the family. Like there's right. no doubt about it. You know what I'm right. saying? Everybody has secrets. Right. And there's some people that you don't really want to prick because they're going to burst. Right. You know? Right. And so um, I made the video. You saw the video. You contacted me. Right. You DM me. And I watched your videos. Right? right? And even from the phone call, the initial phone call we had, um, I knew that you knew information that only people that were um, in my family know that I talked to my aunties about and stuff like that. Right. So, um, so you contacted me, and you know we had our 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 um, pre conversation, which was like you know um, a breath of fresh air because for me, you know, but I know for you it was as well because we like the fuck. You know, so I'm 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 excited. I know that this is going to ruffle a lot of feathers. Um, I really don't give a fuck. Like that's one thing that. Oh, and let me be clear. Somebody seen your video and sent it to me and said, "Miss Diva, you need to take a look at this because they know I had been following this story. They sent your video to me on TikTok. Let me be clear. Okay. Let me be clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, after this, you know what I'm saying? We had our phone call, and so now we are here, right? Right. And so um, I just want to kind of, like, you know, allow you to introduce yourself and, you know, okay. like, give that brief introduction of who Miss Diva is and um, what is the... Because, mind you, people don't understand. We, we didn't conspire. This was just happened to be some social media-type yeah. connection, right? And it yeah. just so happened to fit 
in a in fit like a glove, you know. Right. So, right. um, so go ahead and, and you know what I'm saying, introduce yourself and just go through the whole spiel. Okay, I am Catrice Thomas, aka Miss Diva of Diva's Comedy. Um, born and raised out of Detroit, Michigan. Um, I've been in Vegas for um seven years now, mm-hmm. and um, I'm the step sister of Tony Welch. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad was married to her mom 46 years. Mm-hmm. Um, they were together 10 years before they got married. So we're talking almost 50 some years. Um, I met Tony so when I was eight, she was 12. Um, this big fight with us been going on about four years now. It's stemming from her calling her mom um, a bunch of names. And I stepped in and by me standing up to the Tony. Oh, okay, well, you say, look, when you say names, you got to say it now. <laughs> okay. When we when I stood up to the Tonisa Welch about calling her mother out of her name, this is what started all of this. Me and Tonisa have been sisters almost 40 some years, and this is the first time we ever fell out. I'm just saying. I'm, right. I'm just saying. You know, because when it first when it first came out, they was looking at me as, oh, Miss Diva the trouble starter, or she did. No, this is our first time ever falling out as sisters. And we've been beefing almost four years now. And mom then passed away and everything. And um, she just steady coming at me. And so I made a, a part one video four years ago to let you know that this has been going on. And um, here it is six months later, I made part two. And um, it's just been an ongoing thing. And, um, and that's where we at. That's where we at today. And for okay. me to find a beautiful woman like you that got the same story and the same thing said to you, when I read your stories, I said, wow, damn, you call me ugly and fat too. Damn, that must be one of their words because I've been the ugly one for the last four years, fat, broke, got to work. I, I just want to know what's wrong with me working. I'm a boss on my job. <laughs> I just want to see what's wrong with me working. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I think that um, one thing that I want to say, and, and, and this is just not to um, the, that particular person, but right. I think that now we live in an age where people glamorize, um, you know, yeah. things and people and they create this atmosphere for them right. where they become delusional. Right. And they there don't become reality. And yeah. so we are in this is 2024 so we seen cat williams we seen monique last year cassie jumped it off you know with her lawsuit to diddy so all of these people that have these things and this is not to say these people are bad it's just that when you hurt someone there's accountability when you've done some things there's accountability we 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 no longer can live in a society where we glorify a person just because of a name or a dollar amount or you know right materialistic item you know, so right. um, with that being said, you know, there's people of every facet. And so I'm going to just be as candid as possible um, okay. while we talk or whatever. And I'm not going to sugarcoat anything to appease anybody. Um, That's right. I'm in my 40s, I have no problem addressing That's anyone because right. I'm very, very, very grown. No parent, right. no nobody can whoop me. You know, That's the only right. person that can whoop That's me right. is God. And if God gave me the green light, baby. Come on, somebody better preach. <laughs> so, okay, so let's get into it because a lot of people really don't understand. Like I've talked about my relationship with my father, you know, um, people people are now like, I really wasn't like, oh, my father is, you know what I'm saying, Harold? And he was blah, 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 blah you know? Right. Um, right. But then when people start putting two to two together because my father had been on my, um, Instagram lives and stuff like that. And I've, you know, posted stuff about my father. People start putting two, two and two together. So I right. believe that there is a, you know, everybody has different sides, you know, right. but there was a side that was put out um, to the media, which I was not privy to, you know, he, he could right. have been abusive. You know, my mom said it, Tony right. said, it, okay. He could have been abusive. Right. He could have did all these things, but also, I know from being his daughter and having that type of aggressive attitude, it's mm-hmm. a cause and effect. 
You right. get what I'm saying? Because and we're not have, and we're not making it right now. We're not yeah. saying that it's okay for a man to hit a woman. We're not right. saying that. But anytime, exactly. like you said, we're talking about three hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars, and you getting smart, and you didn't, and you didn't spend all this man money. It's the it's you know you got to look at the facts. No, it's not right for him to put his hand up. More, Lord knows, me and you not glorifying that. But exactly. we're stating facts. This man is missing three hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. I was there. That money was in my parents' house. That money was in my parents' house in the in the uh, safe. Okay, and I was there when that money was being spent. No, I didn't get none of it, but my parents spent that money and some of it. And I know that for a fact. So when I seen your story, I'm like, damn, she knows a lot. It's the truth. It's the truth. That is the truth. And right. it is what it is. We're not, when you, the thing that got me with her bio is if you're going to put a bio out, tell the truth. Tell the truth. And, I, and to my defense, I feel like they should have done enough homework on her before they done this bio because I haven't seen the bio and I refuse to watch it because can't nobody describe my daddy better than me. I'm Miss I'm Diva of Diva's comedy and that comedy come from my dad. And from what I'm told, this man that played in that bio was nothing funny about him. My dad was no serious man. Just like you know your dad, I know my dad. I got mm -hmm. this comedy from my dad, baby. And, um, and and that's where it's at today, you know. Um, it's just like you said, it's just it's just for somebody to go on that long, 60 something years old, that's just a little too old. It's either you're gonna be this, you gotta get in your age, first of all. When you get that age and you hanging with 20 year olds and 25 year olds, it's not making sense. And it's not adding up. Right. It's not adding up, you know? Um, mm -hmm. you, you spoke your truth. And the thing I like about your story, you had it to the bone. You had the truth all the way to the bone. You didn't even hold them up. And I got to give you that. You know what you're talking about, Queen. You know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, thank you. So, okay, so let's start from the beginning because, um, you know, as it states, um, you've been in Tonisa life uh, for a yeah. very long time. So you pretty much know my father and and know yep. the magnitude of the situation. So let's start yep. at the beginning of okay. with my father and, you know, them actually being a couple. I have my memories, but, you know, mine are from a child, you know. Right. I was right. 10. I was 7. Right. You know, right. I was a little girl. So by the time my father went to prison, I was 13. Actually, how, how I found out my father went to prison when he went for seven years was my Uncle Matthew came to my um, middle school graduation. And I said, where's my dad? He said, oh, your father is in prison. He's been indicted. This, this was how I found out at my graduation. So, you know, imagine the blow. I'm like, what, yeah. you know, what kind of mess is this? So, you know, he's missed my high school graduation, my, my first marriage, my son's birth, you know, all of those pivotal points that happened within seven years, he's missed it. My, you know, even wow. to where my first car, it had to be Tonisa coming to assist me, which I wanted to getting a lemon for eighteen hundred dollars and taking it back and going shopping. You know. So um so yeah, so a lot of pivotal points he's missed. Um but I know that as far as like, you know, during the prime, I know that you basically were around and as an adult. So what are some of your like things that you remember from that era? Well, let me be honest. I was scared of your dad. He was so damn serious. I didn't even crack a joke around his ass, okay? But he was always, he never treated me wrong or different. Uh -huh. um, I'm here. He took, my, he took my son in right up under his wing. So that there gave me a little comfortability. Now, I do remember, again, I always the sister to work the two jobs. So I always worked and had my own. So I mm -hmm. wasn't around as much, but I was around... Um, when he, um, the times you used to come over, I used to hear about you were over, you know, his daughter's over, this, that, and those, but I never had a chance to meet you because when my son went over to the house, he was just over there for the weekend. I didn't have to go. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. over there with her boys. But your dad have always treated me right. Um, yeah, him and Tony had their fights and their stuff like that. And even all the way down to the fight where um, he came home and his money was gone, Okay. Um, yes, he, he did jump on her. Yes, she did wind up in the hospital and she got a plate in her arm right here to this day 
from that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not saying it was right. You know, um, I can understand his anger. He left his money with our family. Okay. He left it with her at my parents' house and he come home to nothing. He come home to nothing and somebody getting smart and going back and forth with him. That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm not condoning anything, but that's the truth. You know, um, your dad has always been a hustler. No matter what he did, he um, he always held his ground. Like you said, um, your story is the truth. He was going to jail and he asked him to watch out for his wife and kids. And he did. Um, he did wind up going with Tony. He did. Yes, he did. And, right. it, and and it was and that's just the way it went. When I seen your story, I say this young lady know exactly what she's talking about. And um, I watched um, it bloom. I was there in the beginning of it. Um, they started going together. Um, your dad comes home, and that's when the fight happened. Okay. Um, he also he also broke up his family for Tonisa. That's how that went. So he left his family to be with Tony. And um, when your dad came home, it, it, it is what it is, you know? And, and that's the way that went in my eyes. Well, I know, do but, remember yeah. when my father came home, um, I think it was my son's maybe first Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, and we went over to the house or whatever, and Terry mm -hmm. was there. And my father was sleeping on the couch. Um, and I at that you know i didn't know like no now that i know like i can remember even like being little and seeing my father going upstairs he have a table full of money right i didn't know i just knew like my daddy got a lot of money you know i didn't right. know the the magnitude of what i was seeing as a child even you know in my early 20s i didn't realize that that was terry and you know the whole situation right, right. so um right. you know i think that 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 whole little love story whether they put out on stars whether it's put out right. in the the bt um right. i think that that was a little bit misconstrued yeah, you know it was. It it was. Became a glamorized love story as opposed right. to right. you know my husband yeah. who couldn't see his children unless he got married to me in prison you know i the man that was supposed to watch over us and make sure we were financially good wound right. up becoming my lover and it became a big right. play, right? That's right. And, and that's um, you know, and so I think that, that that part needs to which which my father addressed in the YouTube um that I that I did for him, but I think that part needs to be more emphasized as opposed to this glamour. Because I didn't watch the BMF series, I haven't watched the I haven't watched any of Trap Queens, that reality show, the right. things that she's done. I've haven't watched it. Why haven't I watched it? Well, for one, I don't watch that type of stuff, to be right. honest. You know, right. and for two, why would I want to watch something like that? Like that's not entertaining to me. You know, when and, I watch and, and I felt the same way because I grew, I was around them. So with the series, it was like, okay, that's just TV stuff. I was actually around the mother, Big Me, T, and the sister. So like you said, it didn't do nothing for me. Now, what episode I did watch was um, the one with Lala, and mm -hmm. she had a problem with that, but that was the truth. That was the truth. I don't know why you, I mean, it is what it is. You yeah. went with him and he's like, now, what? He is what, 50, 51 now? And you 63 this year? It is what it is. Right. It yeah. is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, and, and I've seen like the little stuff that was put out. I think that which what's funny to me was when I put my content out, I was thinking, I thought about the other, like, did you go on everybody's page who addressed this? Cause everybody not loving you or was it just happened to be people that you know, that you have a personal relationship with, you know, which mm -hmm. you take that offensive and which you should take it offensive. You know, you're a human, right? You know what I'm saying? Tony is human. She has the right to be offended and what, what is being said about her but also bitch you need to realize that you can't be out here doing shit and thinking don't affect people or coming up with a narrative like for me my standpoint is this is my father my father refused to address anything the calling right. him a snitch calling him a woman right. beater insecure, right. you know using this platform to kind of build off of like even the making it seem like you were this queen pen you know making right. it seem like you had this and this is stuff that my father 
has told me I haven't watched it, but the narrative right. has not been what it is. And so for right. my father, I told my father, I said, if you were, you know, in this position in, in the age of people glorify these type of people because of the businesses right. that they have, I said, right. if anybody told their story it should have been you but That's the right. fact that you can tell your story and the narrative and and, yep. and how you were was chose right. for you somebody has to address it right and and, and, and you're absolutely have, right yeah and we don't have the closest relationship but right. i am his only daughter and right. my brother is obviously with the shits because he the one that took it and did all the stuff with 50 and, you know, did the whole trademark of the BMF brand and went through all that stuff. Yeah. So obviously he's with it. So who else is going to be on that side? And I just so That's have right. a platform, you know? Right. So right. for me, it's just like, I'm just doing this to vindicate. And also it's kind of like, do y'all know the fuck? Like, cause I have people that come from like, do you know who my family is? Like, right. let's, let, let's keep it a bean. Let's keep it a buck, you know? Right. So, um, so yeah, so as far as, um, like the situation when you and Tonisa, you know, like you watching her throughout this, because when, when, when BMF was being created, all mm -hmm. that my father was in prison. So I wasn't around. Only time I seen right. Tonisa, when my son was born, she came to the hospital, bought me a hundred dollars. And then I didn't see her. Uh, I seen her maybe three times when my mama got married, when, my when I got my first car and when my son was born. After that, I right. didn't see her again until uh, my father was out, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. But within that time, within that seven year span, you were still around. I didn't have a relationship with my brothers. Um, I didn't have a relationship with my father's family, to be honest. Right. That that whole right. side, we didn't. We I knew that was my family, but my grandmother, right. me being the first, the first grandchild, the first niece. You know, the oldest, it seemed like as adults, like now as me an adult, it was their job to create that relationship. It was and not that, my And that's right, baby, because I knew your grandmother. Your grandmother was very, very much into um, your brother's life. Matter of fact, she done a lot of babysitting. She yeah. kept your brother a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot. And <laughs> they had a close, close bond. I remember that well, like yesterday. We all respected your grandmother. She was a beautiful lady. She didn't play. She didn't get off into that mess. She was just who she was. And um, she didn't She didn't play with Tony like that. She let your dad handle that. Your grandma yeah. didn't play them games. But uh, she was very much a grandmother to all them boys. Okay? Yeah. But Corey was the, um, like when the other boys got older, Corey was with her a lot. Yeah. yeah. He spent the most time with his grandmother. But, um. You know, with all them boys, um, one thing I can give your dad credit for, he was very, um, he was very active with the boys. He had them in order, okay? Mm -hmm. They would have to be at that table with that homework. He didn't play that because my son would tell me the stories. And I was like, really? And uh, still, I'm still afraid of your dad now, but I'm talking to him, right? But it's right. like nobody, everybody was like straight up with him. It wasn't no goofy and, uh, it wasn't no comedy with him now. I did comedy with everybody else, the BMF, everybody, but it wasn't no comedy with that. No, no. But he's always been proud of me, you know, him and his adventures with the ice cream truck, dealerships and stuff like that. You know, um, me and your dad had a great relationship, sweetie. I, the thing is, I didn't get off into a lot of it because I'm the sister that worked the two jobs over 25 years. Yeah, I kept two jobs. No, none of my cars, I've been getting new cars but since 1990. Not one BMF helped get. I'm just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> and um, and when I drove off the lot, my son drove off the lot with five new ones. Not one BMF got. So, and, that, and that's where my voice came in at. If you were the person that followed her, of course you're not going to have a voice. And people couldn't understand why is it that that's your sister and she watched you work two jobs? And she seemed to tell the world I'm mad at her. No, I'm not mad at you, baby. That's why I got this voice. And nobody else can talk smart to you but me. Because I took care of myself. I didn't live off BMF. No, sweetie. No. And, I'm, and when it comes down to you mentioned about doing for each other, Tony didn't do for her family like that. Tony did more for the groupies than her family. Now, she says her and her mom was best friends. Okay, queen, if you were Tonisa, would you buy your mother a 2000 Focus with the window rolled down? 
<laughs> no, I'm serious. No. And let me tell you how God worked. Four years ago in Vegas, do you know who and your brother had to drive to Vegas to get that same focus and drive it back to L.A.? Because your brother needed a car? They didn't even see the lesson in that, baby. I was here in Vegas at the condo four years ago. She purchased her mother. I don't care if your mama ain't got no legs. With the kind of money that Tony used to say she blew, ain't nowhere in the hell. Your parents' condo had to get a short sale. The house in Ypsilanti, where the money was, had to get a short sale. And you bought your mother a 2000 Focus with the window roll down. I can't make this up. I, I can't even take this to the next comedy. I can't. <laughs> I can't. And 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 and, it, and this was a shame because you and I both know Tony got a bunch of videos on YouTube talking about how much money she blew through. Do you know ain't a family member today got a car, house, property? Do you know her favorite niece is still living in the house we grew up in? Girl, that house doing a gangster lean. <laughs> How is it that you had all this money, you, you, you had all this money you blew through, and nobody got anything that you have gotten in 2024, they can't show you a house, they can't show you a property, they can't show you a car, can't nobody show you nothing Tonisa have done for them. She done more for the groupies than she did her family. It was no reason not helping Catrice. I worked two jobs. Whatever happened, if you work in two jobs, they'll help you. Tonisa did more for her groupies and she was more into her career than helping her family. It was more important to her to help other people than her family. So that's why God do things for a reason. In 2024, you have nothing. You have to fake it because you had all that money and this is what you've done for your family. Nothing. Because if she had done for her family, why is it that our family is the only one that's not on the BMF series? You got all of them boys you got all the meat and, and them family making money. Why isn't the Welch's making any? Why? You, or the meals. She says she makes stars. Honest, she says she makes stars, though, Queen. She says she makes stars. Well, if you're not a fucking star, how you gonna make a star? <laughs> she says she makes stars. <laughs> yeah, she says she makes stars. And then my thing is, how do you make a star when you're not one? Somebody made you a star. Who? You show one Jesus. No, I'm saying Harold Mills opened up the opened up the avenues for her to even have this platform, you know, for her to even utilize that story. You and know? let me tell you, she's so bold. When she had the um red carpet in Detroit, I got a phone call that your dad walked down that that, that red carpet, shirt on and everything. They say your dad looked up at that screen and say he was so embarrassed because she didn't even give him time to even tell the man she talked about him. You made that man look bad at that premiere. Your father was embarrassed. I don't know why he went. Woo! Let me shut up. Woo! Because why would you go to that? After, after, after what was portrayed on Stars... <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. After all this stuff has been said in interviews, why would you even subject yourself to that? You know, Tell me. E even to this day, like she was, she was upset. I'm sorry, my I like keep. No, it's okay. Sorry, baby. Uh -huh. um, I know that she was upset that I mentioned that my father gave her forty dollars for her phone bill. But my question was, why are you giving her forty dollars for a phone bill? Right. After all that's been done, why? Why does she have access? to even ask you anything when your children well i can't even say because i don't know what goes right. on with my brother but i know mm -hmm. from me in my perspective me being the first daughter me being you know the only daughter the first child or or me right. giving him the only grandchild because if, if it don't come out of my womb trust me we know he ain't getting no grandkids right that's so, right so you know my you silly, I can't even ask you silly for that one you silly for that one i just caught that <laughs> You know you silly, don't you? You so damn silly. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you, queen. You, I just caught that. You know you know, you ain't too slow. I mean, I'm just saying, though. 
If I don't produce it, you ain't get there, homie. So, you know, my so she so she so she was upset about that, but this was my thing. How is it after all of this, you know, right. she's still able to ask him for forty dollars when she clearly has embarrassed him on national television several times? Yeah. So yeah. why would you go to a premiere? Why would you subject yourself? You there know, you go. When 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 the the son that you know she had said was his that later found out wasn't when he passed, right. you know, you ran out there to the funeral. You know, do you to be know, do you know time. do you know I didn't know that? My son told me that recently. I did not know that she put him on, on your dad. I did not know that. My son cleared it the other day, which by the way, guys, you and my son is the same age, Queen. And um, he told me, he said, Mama, you didn't know that? I said, no, I didn't. He said, yeah, she put that on him until then they had the, um, your brother and said, oh, okay. But do you know to this day, nobody ever met they, that, that little boy's daddy? We never knew who he was until after he got killed. We never knew who his dad, it was never even brought up who his dad was. We left it as your dad. I'm just telling you. We never, and I've been there 50 years, as you can see. It was never brought up. It was, and to this day, I have never met that little boy's daddy and never knew who he was. Never, never. Yeah. My son told me that your dad came home and caught him in the house and told that butt up, okay? Say so he tore it up and scared him so bad, he said it never came back. Mm. My son told me that story because he was there. Ain't no allegedly here, baby. My son was there in the home and told me how it happened. And your dad came home and oh, dude was there. And that was the real father there. I never knew this. I never knew this story. So everything you saying, sweetie, you know what you're talking about. That's the true story. Um... But your dad, but your dad went on and took care of him like it was his. You couldn't tell no difference, you know. Mm -hmm. But in our or in our and when we were growing up, parents sometimes did more for the kids than they did for their own. My daddy was guilty of that. I know you were telling me about your dad, but let me tell you mine. Mine was guilty of that. He even got so angry. He said, "Daddy, you know I miss raising my own damn kids, messing with these goddamn Welches." My dad was angry and he apologized. I hope one day that your dad come to you and apologize because what he don't need, what he don't know is all you need is an apology. I was wrong, daughter. I messed up because he did do take care of her kids. Okay. He, even after he found out that boy wasn't his, you couldn't tell no difference. And he even took care of my son. So sweetheart, he has to be accountable for that. And I will tell him that you need to apologize to your daughter because any time you're dealing with a woman and they don't take care of your kid, it ain't a man I dated that didn't take care of mine. And I'm being honest. And Me when it comes down. even and even down to my sister men that love my son, and that goes for your dad and T and me. Okay? Okay? And they love me to the bone. And I thank God they didn't hold nothing against me with her. Because I'd be hit right now. You hear me? <laughs> and I'm telling you what Jesus loved. I, I'm, I, like you said, I can't get into the who did what. I just know he was good to my dad. He paid off my dad, Lincoln. And, and for that, I will always be grateful. That, T done a lot for us. But did you hear what I said? I said T. Tonisa was known for the $100 queen. She ain't gonna give you nothing but a hundred. Yeah, my dad said, you know what? Uh, uh, you know, Tony ain't gonna give you nothing but a hundred dollars. Do you know BML's made it rain and Tony said got up on, uh, on a stool and watched her family get on their knees? My daddy got on his knees. I got on my knees. All of her family got on their knees and had to pick up money while she watched us. So while she making these videos, she blew through all this money. She didn't do nothing for her family, baby. That's why she ain't got nothing now. It speaks for itself. If you had to help your family with that kind of money, you should have something now. You shouldn't need no $40. Because everybody's still trying to figure out what phone company you talking about with that $40. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was in my comments asking, what phone plan is that? Because I need They that. sure did. Your ass going to get a, you going to get a contract for a phone company because <laughs> everybody want to know what the hell company you talking about. But I, I ain't going to put their company out there because they're going to have to pay me for that commercial. Right. <laughs> You so, famous okay, for so that phone bill, girl. You are famous. <laughs> but um, and 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 even still, Thanksgiving came along. She was bragging about one of her baby daddies paying for the hall. Now you know you broke when you bragging about somebody paying for a hall. You gotta remember when you got a BMF brand on your name, you got to be careful of what you say. You don't see no other BMF members talking about nobody paying for no damn hall. You ain't seen no other BMF member by their mama focused with the. You didn't even get your mama power windows. She got her mama at the roll down, girl. <laughs> I wouldn't give a damn if my mama didn't have no like this. God damn it, she would have been in one of them goddamn pouser. <laughs> that damn it, she would have had a, a year paid in Uber. Okay? But she would have blown through that kind of money. You don't blow through that kind of money and buy your mama no focus. It's one of them gold ones, 2,000 focus. And you mad because I told that. It's the truth. I'm the sister that's in Vegas. I'm the sister that's been in the condo. I'm the sister. And when T got out of jail, she went and broke her neck from Vegas. You know, she came all the way to Vegas to take her mother's furniture from me. We don't fit to fight you over your mama's furniture, baby. But as soon as they let T out of jail, she said, forget the furniture and everything. Do you know that the, the, the real estate went in and let me get stuff out of there because she left it, running back to Detroit to get that T when he got released? Yeah. And so, and so, okay, so this is my thing. I do remember now, I set up some interviews with her, with uh, Marlon and Bossop and her and um, Terry for a Detroit radio station. And um, at the time, you know, I had, I wanted to help her. You know, I wanted to, I thought it would be something for the family. You know, I didn't know all of, because this was when my father went to jail the third time. Because I know the first time he went to jail, he got indicted. The second right. time he went to jail because of what happened with Tony. Um, right. And then the, the third time is when they found out who my father really was in connection to BMF. Um, and right. he did an additional six years. So within that time, you know, I, my father didn't tell me he was going to prison. Um, I found out on the streets, her hairdresser was a gossiper um, and a friend, Andrea. I don't know if you know Andrea, but Andrea um, did hair for my, you know, used to be best friend. And so, <laughs> um, Andrea's a very nice, sweet person and everything, you know, but, um, you know, um, yes, that's, that's the only girlfriend that I know that can sleep with my husband and still do my hair. <laughs> that's not no allegedly. No, I know. I, I know it's not. Me and you ain't cool after you done slept with my husband, baby. I right. wouldn't give a damn what it is. You ain't finna do my hair, queen. Exactly. You ain't finna do my hair no more after you done slept with my husband. That's what you ain't gonna do. You not even gonna put no makeup on me. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that's how I found out through through her. Um, Cause she likes to spread all of uh, my family seats to my um, now um, ex best friend because my best friend would want to call me and gossip about my family and I'm just like I don't want to talk to you actually she even was the one to call my son because I wasn't talking to her to tell her that my brother was dead that's how I found out because Andrea told my friend and my friend called my son because she couldn't talk to me because I cut her off and then I called my father and I said so you weren't going to tell me Jason died he said well why was I going to tell you somebody you know and I'm not going to say how he died but um, he said, why would I call and tell you something about that? And I'm like, why would, why would you? You know, that's crazy. But let yeah. me leave that one alone. You know, yeah. you know, My that's kind of a touchy. Himself. That's kind of touchy for me because um, I love Jason. Jason loved me. He didn't care whether me and his mama wasn't speaking or not. He was a true one. He stuck in there with Miss Stevie. He told me I'm always going to be his auntie. Don't make me cry. 
don't make me cry. But um, yeah. yeah, he 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 didn't care about the beef. He said, "You gonna always be my auntie, always." And them boys, them boys love their mom. The only one disrespected was your brother, and that's because he was trying to follow up against his mama. That's understandable. But I've never had a problem with the oldest one or the middle one. Yeah. I hadn't had any problems until the fallout. Of course, he's following behind his mama, and I get that. He mad at him about that. You know, I'm not mad, but sometimes you 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 stuck out a lot of things. Um, when it comes to motherhood, you can't put your boys out here in the streets and put them out and see that all that should have been in the bio. You can't put your boys in the street and sell drugs and then you try to convert them back to regular living. And that was what's wrong with Jason. He couldn't deal with the real life because he was so used to stuff. My son was telling me he was like, oh, don't bring nobody over. I'm not ready. He was so used to that world to where he couldn't he couldn't do it. And do you know, Jason let people know he was going to kill himself. He let it be known, yeah, three days before he done it. And he told why. And we'll get into that later on. You know, we're going to save that one for something else. But, yeah, it's it's a big story behind that. And that's why you didn't hear a lot about it, sweetie, okay? Yeah. And it's coming from his wife. I can't make this up. I had never met his wife. But I met her when he died, and she called me, and we connected. And she told me a whole story. And it's not allegedly. It's coming out of his wife's mouth. And um, we'll get into that on another one of our things, you know, but um, yeah, that was that was really hurtful for me, and um, and um, it was all about um, like you were saying when it come down to Tonisa, Tonisa would go through your friends list. She befriended all my friends, contacted all my family, yeah, contact all of them to turn them against you, and that's what she do. So when I seen what she said to you. Four months ago, she had put the ugliest post up about me, how ugly and bald-headed, gorilla, monkey, so bad, they had her to take it down. But this same woman to tell you how she built one up, but she'll tear you down. So when I seen your story, I go, this girl ain't nowhere ugly. Why would you? You gonna get enough. My daddy said, you know what? I'm gonna tell you one thing. When Tony get older, her face gonna drop like her mama's did, and she ain't gonna be so cute. And she ain't gonna be able to say them niggas running after, okay? Cause ain't no nigga running after nobody ass swinging like that, okay? <laughs> well, um, I think that, you know, we've we've had conversations where our last conversation we were addressing um, you know, her my things that I wanted her to do with my brother, right? My brother's 10 years younger than me. I understand that he's very misguided. When she went to prison, he was a teenager, you know? Yep. And yep. he was a teenager in LA, you yep. know? And after being around people like Diddy and JD and all this kind of stuff, and Floyd yep. and all of these people, right. that's a very volatile re like environment for a young they man. Put a, they put a lot on your brother. I can tell you this firsthand. They had your brother in charge of a lot of stuff, a lot of money, a lot of jury. Your brother was in charge of millions of dollars at one time. So I can tell you that at a young age. And when she went to jail, he carried that out and kept it going as a young boy. So that's why he's going through a lot now. Because what he's going through now, he's been going through almost 15 years. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just telling you, it ain't just started one or two years ago, three years ago. We talking almost 15 years of this. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And and you know, I'm I'm there with it. And and I pray, I pray that he get the help and I pray that she get the help she needs and start focusing on her kids and what happened with her son. Because even with your son losing your son, you would think she would be at another kind of another thinking something else, not this. Because if I lost my son, I'd be in a nut house, baby. Mm -hmm. a nut house. That. You hear me? I mean, but especially in, in the way that she lost them, you know? Yeah. And I've yeah. had a conversation with her about being a mother because I am a mother to a son. And my That's son's me mental health, my son's, you know, financial health, his physical health, his spiritual health is more That's important right. than anything because That's he's right. the one that's going to carry the lineage out. He's going to, he right. is responsible for, for, for future generations after me. You know, right. and so right. um, I reached out to her, not not from a stepmama to stepdaughter, but from mother to right. mother, you know, and right. told her, you need to really 
hone in on this, you know. And at first it was, you know, negativity and she was trying to get smart. And I'm like, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. You need to oh, she ain't gonna, oh, oh, she's not gonna hear that. And and let me tell you, I don't care what you say. She she can't deal with the truth. She she can't. I'm sorry, she can't. And and yeah. even because I'm not knocking nobody, but when it came to my son, I put him first. Damn Diva's comedy. Mm -hmm. Diva's comedy don't come before my son, baby. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that was the problem with her and her boys. She put herself before her kids. And it's the truth. You want to go through and knock you and talk about me and do all this kind of stuff? Our, our fight wouldn't even have went left. Me and her got into it over something, but that wasn't enough for you to threaten to have me beat up in Vegas. She's been threatening my life for four years now. To have me beat up, she even threatened to lose. I'm a boss on my job. She even threatened to lose my job, to call my job. It got so bad. The threats got so bad, my son had to put it to a cease and let him know, if you lay one finger on my mama, you're going to see me. It shouldn't have been that. You want to get me killed? Because I checked you about your mama? That's a yeah. little too drastic. That's a little too drastic. Don't you think? That's yeah. a cat fight. Me and you fall out. I'm, and I'm not, not going to have you beat up, baby. And I'm you're my stepsister that many years. So when people ask me, me and Tonisha could never be, never be, ever again. Because when you threaten my life, that's too much. And my yeah. mother had to have the condo lock changed. Before she died, she had the locks changed on the condo because she really believed her daughter would have something done to me. I can't make this up, and this ain't allegedly. When it comes to that, I take that serious. And for me to have been her sister, ooh, you're going to make me cry. For me to have been her sister 50 fucking years and to threaten to have me beat up? Yeah. Wasn't that serious? Because me and you, if me and you sisters that long, we can get into it. But to have you beat up and threaten to have you beat up and to play on your phone for damn near three years and got people calling me on my phone, talking about me, talking about my mother. Do you know my mother been dead? My stepmama died three years ago. My real mother has been dead since 2003. Do you know she calling on my phone, having people talk about my mother? Who can, my mother been dead since 03, baby. But I'd be wrong if I tell somebody your mother went with my dad's handyman for 15 years. I'm wrong for that though, right? But that's true, ain't no allegedly. Yes, my mother, yes, my father was a player. Yes, my father got out there and did his thing. But two wrongs don't make it right. You went with the handyman 15 years. She should have put that in the bio. <laughs> Don't sit there and talk about you and your mama was best friends. Stop that. Don't nobody buy their mama no focus. If you close to your mama, you're going to get a, a limo. Right. And that's what it is, baby. And, and, and Tonisa needs to focus on her children. You got one that's in trouble right now. You and I both know. We ain't going there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you lost one. Do you know a month after Jason passed away, she was doing karaoke and parties? I was still be in the state of a month. A month right. after Jason was uh, buried, she was karaoke, partying, and I don't know for the life of me, why is she going on 63 years old, August 11th, and you partying with these 20 and 30 years old, and it's always been that way. She went on the reality show. Stop calling people ugly. When you went on the reality show, they couldn't even find no makeup for your ass. She was orange, if you go back and look. <laughs> you sitting up here finna fight these girls, and your ass sitting up here 59 at the time. You finna fight them. You would've got your ass tore up. And even now at 63, you going on 63 years old, and you still up here trying to act like you a young girl, arguing with you. I'm old enough to be your mama. I just met you, and what I tell you, I'm auntie to you. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to set the example for you. I'm sitting up here tearing you down, and I used to be married to your daddy. Why is you sitting up calling your ex-husband's daughter ugly and fat? Same way you did me. 
But let me tell you this about Miss Diva. I ain't never wrote foundation a day in my life, sweetie, and I'll be 60 this year. <laughs> I ain't trying to brag, but when you call somebody ugly, make sure you don't take pictures with filters. I don't even know how to use a filter with my slow ass. <laughs> and you right here with all these damn filters on. How long you gonna be 40, girl? You'll be 63 August 11th. Oh no, own it. And you told me, stop telling people I'm your big sister. Just tell them I'm your sister. And all this, <laughs> see all this shit, that mean you're lying. Because when you're telling the truth, you talk clear. When you're lying, right. stop. Even in the bio, they said at the end, you act like you left T. You ain't leave T. You ran your ass from Vegas three years ago as soon as he got released. You told a plane up getting back. Right. Did you know that girl was having sex in the back backyard of his mother? His mother looks out the kitchen window. She out there having sex with that man in that man's mama backyard. I can't in make the this up. In the backyard. I can't make this up. Allegedly. And this ain't no allegedly either. You was in the backyard of this lady's home having sex with T in the backyard. You should have put that in the bio. <laughs> you should have put in the bio that my ex-husband had me $385,000 at my parents' house in the safe and I spent all of it. You should have put that in the bio that he's trying to embarrass this man on the movie. Right. It's a, you should have put it in the bio. Why did that man have to go to that premiere and look bad and embarrassed? And then you want to make yourself look good. And you're absolutely right. When Harold met Tony, she was drug addict. Tony was a size one. I didn't even know they made a size one, baby. <laughs> Tony was boosting in the damn stores. Mm. Come on now. You're right. Then you want to try to make somebody look bad. You and your brothers all on dope. That brother hers running around here with foundation on. Nigga, you in Detroit. What is you doing with foundation on? <laughs> I've been stealing my daddy. Look, used to steal everything when nailed down in the house. Tony said her brother couldn't get keys to the family house. <laughs> my mother personally had me to come to Vegas and move in the condo. Did you know that? Mm. This is the first time I ever left Detroit, and I've been here seven years. My mother asked me to come move in the condo, baby. And when she died, the only reason why she was selling it, because Tony and her brother needed some money, and they had to do a short sale. Because, again, you blew through all that money. Who don't pay off their parents' houses? Or set Talk up a me. business or pay for colleges, tuitions. You know, because I still look, I had to pay, I had to uh, uh, do pay for my student loan. So, can school. I ask you this? Why is it that she don't, and it speaks for itself. If you had all of that money, where is it? You didn't do nothing for nobody. You want to tell the world, oh, my sister mad at me for not, I, she felt like I, uh, uh, she been like, uh. I ain't seen him that her. I didn't feel like shit. I've been getting a new car since 1990 and not one of them got BMF on it. Ask your daddy. Right. Well, I mean, in my case, I feel like her and my father should have made sure that the children, which includes me, were taken care of. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like that should have been a conversation to where if she was to take my right. father's call my mother and say, look, I'm going to do this, but I'm going to give you something to make sure that your daughter is good because I'm going to make sure yeah. my son is good. You know, My son shouldn't have been taken care of the way he took care of and you the real damn daughter. Yeah. My son got taken care of. I'm going to give him that. I ain't going to take nothing away from him. Perry, me, your dad, and he only the step. So I feel your pain, baby. My yeah. dad did the same thing. My dad put us down and took care of them. But see the difference with your dad and my dad? My dad admitted it. I'm sorry. But do you know my dad said, if you ever get a platform, I want you to tear them down Welch's ass up. Because Tony didn't do nothing for her family. Nothing. When I tell you nothing, 
everybody was still working and got the same shit they had 30 years ago, girl. Your daddy shouldn't have to pay no phone bill. You blew through millions of dollars. Where's it at? Yeah. Miss, Miss Cookie Lions, where's it at? Where's it at? <laughs> Why so okay, so, so I want to say this though. A lot of people really, I, I, I think, I think a lot of people really miss step on how originally, you know, because the story originally came out through Fifty Cent, you know, and shout That's out to right. Fifty because he is he is a mastermind when it comes to urban television and his he's owning that drop that genre, right? right? So just not right. a slap to Fifty Cent. Like I actually right. fuck with Fifty. I, I I fuck with Fifty. Like I read his books, um, the Forty Law, the Fifty of Laws of Power, um, Hustle Harder, um, okay. and really use his um his motto and how he moves in my day to day now, right? Right. Um, and so when he did the film, was well, the the show when it first came, my brother came to Atlanta for the the um the casting, mm -hmm. and I was a publicist at the time. Um, you know, and I had a plethora of, you know, high end clients or whatever. And uh -huh. I was like, okay, well, you in town, I'm gonna come to the casting. He never sent me the location. He only said he needed a barber to cut his hair. And I'm like, you come to town to do this and you want me to come help you with a barber. Now that's because the first time they tried to do the TV show, I called the production company and told them my father wasn't dealing with it. So I guess it was, we don't want her nowhere near this right i get it you know yeah. um but in the same token we see how that uh basically dissipated you know um i know that she was supposed to be suing um 50 now because the lala character is supposed to be hers but my whole thing is even with the vivica fox play that should show you the character how do you go from having a storyline with 50 cent big meach son is taken care of he on the phone with Terry. I'm sure Terry getting the bag. Where's your bag? And How guess what? Relationship? It's funny you mention that. BMF don't fool with Tony, baby. That's over. That's been over. Yeah, I know. I know. Anytime and... you anytime you ain't got respect for your own mama, you disrespect Big Meech's mama. I'm not telling you no allegedly, okay? Right. Anytime you disrespect Big Meech, Mama, you disrespectful, baby. And and see, this is the thing. A lot of people didn't even realize the play because I talked to her after the fifty thing, and I know that that deal didn't go the way that it didn't go in her favor. I also talked to my brother, and my brother's fast out on Fifty Cent on facebook and i told him to take that down right because i don't think you really want to play with 50 then you see her doing this biopic with vivica fox and judge mathis which right. i think is like and this is no disrespect to judge mathis vivica right. fox will take it high with me but i felt like for for 50's ex-girlfriend who was his nemesis to do for you to do a project with vivica when you come from 50, not only right. was that a downgrade, but that was like right. a snake move, right? That was right. like an opportun a opportunity for Vivica and right. to get back at 50. But it still right. didn't reach the magnitude because when I was in talks to do stuff about my father, I was talking to Netflix. This is not allegedly, like you say, this is real talk, right? It's real talk, right. So for you to do BT Plus when you come from mm -hmm. stars to go, because right. BT Plus is a streaming platform. Let's not get it twisted. Right. BT Plus right. is nowhere up there with Netflix because if you see, the real play would have been to be like Griselda because maybe in her right. mind she thought she was Griselda. Griselda right. got Netflix. You got right. Vivica Fox and Judge Mathis, and right. Eva, right? Right. So right. I don't think people even even realize. And when when it was put out, you see, because I seen you post it and I posted it as well. Fifty Cent went at her and said she should be the first lady of two six three, right? That's so, right. So, That's right. So let's talk about because I don't yep. think a lot of people understand the first lady of BMF versus two six three. Yeah, Versus. and that's the name for two six three is more her because let me let me be clear, let me be real real clear with you. All that time I was in L.A. Mahalan Drive with Big Meech and them, mm -hmm. never. Let me put it on the record. Big Meech ain't never liked Tony, never ever liked it, Tony. Let me just be clear with that. That BMF series was telling you the truth. 
He's never like Tony. And thank you, Jesus. He didn't hold nothing against me. Thank you, Jesus, or his <laughs> mother, or his brother. They love Miss Diva. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Meech told me, he said, You raised a finey, uh, a mighty fine young man. I gotta give him that. Um, yeah, yeah, baby. Um just say it. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. Um, and it's a lot to say too, baby. Like you said, you know, um, she did all of this to wind up with nothing. Nobody's getting paid but that family. You know, yeah. ain't nobody up on no BM, ain't nobody else got nothing. And and then you got to remember too, a lot of stuff got seized because she kind of like got blackballed from BMF. So that's why a lot of the stuff couldn't go. Why you think 50 Cent changed it? Because they, Big Meech ain't finna do nothing with Tony Sony, baby. And he made it clear to him, I'm not doing nothing if Tony Sony had something to do with it. So that's why she wasn't invited to that set. Okay? And his mother feels the same way. Okay? She would never get in anything if them two got something to do with it. So that's where the black ball come in at. And that's why 50 Cent was able to rip her, you know, and, and let it go. Because, he, like you said, he, he had something to say. This I, mean, allegedly. I mean, to, to, to show that Big Meech's son is in it and playing there him, you, go. There you, you know, go. that shows you the volume of how the tables was turned, you know, and I think that 50 made a good business deal for him to even because originally it started with my brother and Tonisa. They brought they they used their connections to, to bring this idea or however they right. did it. Um, right. The first season, I think, you know, when, when it first was developing, because I think 50 gave like 25,000 and they was, you know, hanging out doing all this stuff. Um, right. But I think once he learned the magnitude of it, he knew that as a business person, it would not benefit me to be in business with this woman, you know? Yeah, because the morale wouldn't be there. Did you know that um they got a BML book out? One, two, and three, I believe. And this latest one is out. I haven't read it, but it's just, it's a, it's a part in there where it's showing um Tonisa had told your dad that he she had his back, but in the new book it's showing her snitched on your dad. And that's coming from the writer of the book. Mm. <laughs> in, the, in the latest book, it's showing that she snitched on your dad. Mm. I can't make this up. It's in the book. And they right. and they got they got receipts. Just like I got receipts for all the phone calls, all the threats, and talking about my mom, I'm ugly, gorilla, they're going to come to my job and beat me up. I got receipts. And I told Judge Mathis and Vivica Fox this. Anytime you're ready for a lie detector test, I can pass it with flying colors. Yeah. Yeah. One thing Tony Sawatch would never do is go up against me with a lie detector test because she knows she'll get electrocuted. She know that. And she know I'll float right through it just like that because I'm too old to lie. You notice I right. talk clear? You notice she talk like this? <laughs> it's always that bullshit. Because you're lying. When you get our age, you talk clear. Right. Okay. Did you hear me stuttering through this whole thing? Neither one of okay. us. Ain't no stuttering. Okay. Because okay. okay, it is so, what it is. <laughs> so I want to ask you this. As far as, um, you know, we're, we're in, I like to say the age of the light years, the enlightenment. We in the eight year. We're in the dragon year. So a lot of misconceptions, a lot of things have been addressed, whether, you know, a lot of people are telling their truths and coming against people, characters, even I had, you know, my, my soon to be what, well, not soon to be, but ex-husband coming, coming for my character, which is where I think Tonisa linked with him so they can be. Yeah. You know, she, and that, that's what she does. She goes to your enemy. Now, let me give you a true story and I'm going to put it out there because I'm writing a book and it's going to come out anyway. Tony went to my oldest brother, okay? My oldest brother always been a fan of hers. So recently, I had an auntie that come from out of town, 85 years old. Tonisa took her phone and played on it. Tonisa went and found my brother. Now, I remind you, this same brother is her age. 
she don't realize this same brother said, why in the hell is you her sister and you never fell out with her and she don't do a damn thing for you? That same brother molested his own sister. And I had to text her and let her know that. She likes to go dig up your family. She loves anybody that's against you, like your ex-husband. She likes to go to that. And I'm surprised she didn't contact your ex-friend. Okay? She likes to use you for any extent she can. Just like you brought up um, Andrea. You would go to any extent to get your damn hair did. For, that's because it's free. You can't sleep with my husband, ex, or whatever, and you're going to curl my damn hair. <laughs> I want to put this Tina Turner wig on first. Have some kind of damn morals for yourself. You ain't that much hair to do in the world. You going to sleep with my ex? <laughs> well, you know, she getting it done for free. You know, because I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people like, ride her image, jock her image because they are going off of the the you you got Rick Ross making the song I think I'm Big Meech. You got, you know, Jeezy was a part of BMF and they got the stories on how Big Meech made it rain and people wanted to yeah. be a part of that type of yep. status quo. You know, like I remember um a couple people had reached out to me because they knew her a couple of uh, right. like ladies in the industry or whatever and they was like oh yeah i never you know so all that kind of stuff so i think that a lot of people um feel like they they don't want to live in a reality because they're yeah. living in the past right there you go so, there you go they, we have and to, she has to keep that image up to make people think that she still got it but people don't realize when you get a woman that age and she's hanging with 20 and 30 year olds that's so they can look up to her but she ain't finna mess with no grown women like that, baby. Mm -hmm. You know no. that she don't have friends. You notice all her friends are your age or younger? Mm -hmm. Ain't none of them her age. She she recently did an interview on one of my friends' um podcasts, and I reached out to my friend. I said, That's my that's my stepmama, you know. I mean, but in the same token, funny story, um, one of the ladies, well, not one of the ladies, but the lady that is um Beyonce's tour manager follows me and loves my content. And so she went to show Tony. He's like, oh, I love this girl. She's in Dubai. She was like, oh, that's Corey's sister. And so my brother called me like, yeah, Beyonce's tour manager is a fan of yours and wants to talk to you. Me, I wasn't like, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? For him, I could see how he wanted to make it a status quo. But okay. for me, I'm like, you know how many people follow, like John Sally follow me. Uh, uh, Roxanne Shante sent me a DM and told me that I, I I motivate her. You know, Sabrina, like it's so many people because I've been in the industry. I'm not wild by that type of shit. I don't, like I, that that doesn't move me. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you tell me Eli must fuck with me and he want to right. be on the phone with me, that's right. a different story. Jeff Bezos, right. the owner of Airbnb, right. uh, 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 right. you know what I'm saying? Uber, right. different right. niggas that I want to follow me. You know Hello, Zuckerberg. We we at a bar, you know. But and you know what I love about you? I love your energy because you like to help people. My sister knew all these comedians, and not one time has she ever tried. Never tried to put anybody in place of nothing. You ever had a person that want to see nobody make it but them? Yeah. Oh, 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 or 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 in my sense, it was utilize my connections. You know, because early on you realize I'm still Harold's daughter. So I still got Amen. that hustle and I grew up in the industry and I'm very lit. You know, I just, I just don't, I just didn't want to use my father's name to, cause I could have been did that shit. I could, I could have did That's that right. shit before I did it, you know, and had all these little niggas eating out of my hands. You know, I, I and even, you know something, it never would have got this big. I'm known for the big fight me and her had on Facebook, that, that video, that, 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 um, that um part one, that video set me to the light. And um, because she had done me so bad and got out here and told all these lies on me, she turned the whole entire family against me, which is fine. You got a bunch of dope fiends. Who cares? Right. Like my brother, he said, my her brother, he says, I'm sorry for saying this and doing this. I shouldn't have let Tonisa turn me from you because I've never fell out with the family. 
ever. And that's what everybody don't understand. We never fell out. So what, what, what are you saying? I can't be a drama queen if we ain't never fall out. Am I right? Right. Come on now. Your daddy will tell you that. We ain't never fell out. And if, if it comes to this for me checking you about your mother, so be it. If it came to you threatening to have me beat up, killed, murdered, she even sent, oh, I forgot to tell you about the fake lawyer paper she sent everybody. Did your dad get one of those? Mm-hmm. Did he get the fake lawyer paper? Huh? Well, I, well, well, I know. Well, I know he got he got a letter to uh, 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 submit his image and likeness for everything that she did, and I told him not to sign it. What she uh -uh. wanted to use anyway? No, she said she was sending people fake lawyer letters, like the deceased. Like when she came for me, I tore that ass up. I tore that ass up so bad. She sent me a fake lawyer heading. I could have had her in jail. Yeah, she got this fake lawyer paper that she's sending people. Yeah. yeah. Talk about cease and desist. And typed it in herself. And when you call a lawyer, people, I say, who is this? You know, Tony Well, never heard of her. And do you know I'm told that I can get her on fault? You don't falsify no lawyer papers. Right. Well, well Jason's you, wife. I, look, she Jason said me that. Jason's wife say everybody got one. Jason's yeah. wife say everybody got one. Well, I know she, if she sent me that, I, that would be, a, 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 that would be the profile picture on my TikTok, bitch. Well, she, she loved to send you out fake papers, but um, yeah, yeah. She sent that, she got the fake lawyer papers going around, baby. I could have tore her ass up because I called that lawyer and they never knew who I was. You, you can't use no lawyer's lead. I kept it for a reason. I still got it. Everything I'm saying about Tony, I got receipts. I got, she don't realize that I kept all the ugly things she said. I kept all the terrible, ugly letters and stuff that she said about me. That's when, when she said that about you, I said, oh yeah, this, and she loved to call you a narcissist. She likes to play on your phone. Anybody that see this interview, they're going to be like, she sure ain't lying. She loves to tear you down. She loves to turn all your people against you. Her and your ex-husband, best friends. I know. I'm I'm pretty sure because you know you know what's so crazy is that that's what he would call me a narcissist. He called me fat. He's called me That's ugly. her words. That's on, her words. On social media. Um he's he's called me broke. That's um, her, that's her word. He got all know, the, Let me tell you. She get into the minds even when it come to your dad. He can get into it with her and the next minute he helping her. I said it and I stand on what I said. He can get into it with her and they'll be cool. Am I lying, niece? Mm -mm. He'll talk about her, put her down, hate her, and the next minute you'll catch their ass out eating steak and lobster. Am I lying, niece? <laughs> I said it. Yeah, because they was at the mall when he uh, when he paid her phone bill. Shut and she know he paid it. And she know he paid it. But why would you go after your husband's daughter like that? That shows your character. That's a child up under you. You old enough to be that girl's mother. What are you doing? And then well, how can she talk to your mother after calling her daughter fat and ugly? It wouldn't be nothing else she could say to me. I mean, I feel like, to be honest, to be completely 100% honest, like, had it been... My, my son doesn't like somebody said something about my son my son didn't give me their number right hello and be, because he know me when she came for me i sent it to my father and i posted it so i know my mother seen it neither one of them has probably addressed her right oh Lord. um mm -hmm. which i mm -hmm. feel like they should have you know i had a conversation mm -hmm. with my father he told me just let sleeping dogs lie because she gonna try to call the police and do all this bullshit and i'm like daddy i don't give a fuck because guess what? If I don't stand up for myself in this situation, if I don't stand up for the family, who else going to do it? She you tried know? to bully me for four years and it didn't work. I came out that goddamn corner like Floyd Mayweather on that ass. I know when you see you my video. This, you know what I want to say too? And, and, and this is like, um, a lot of people don't know this, um, but I have my spiritual gift is when people pass, they come to me, right? And I know if you fuck with me or not, if you come to me, if you don't come to me, 
you don't fuck with me. So when my father's mother died, she didn't come to me. My grandmother, best friends, anybody that passed, they they come to me, right? And when Jason passed, he came to me. And Get out of here. Shot, right? And we were at the, he brought me to the funeral. He said, I'm, I'm going to bring you to my funeral. He said, and I want, he said, they ain't going to want you to sit on the front row. He said, you know, my mother and, and them, they don't really fuck with you. He said, and my grandma was there. That's the only time my grandma came to me was she came to me when Jason came to me, right? Wow. And and he Jason came to me and was just like, I just want you to know that they don't fuck with you. And they never fuck with you. You know? And you see how they you see how they treat you at the funeral. I mean, like when when my grandfather passed, my family took all my grandfather's money. I was living out in Atlanta. I didn't have the money for the flight. Nobody flew me and they called and told me my my, my grandfather was like my father. Nobody paid for me to come to the funeral. I was like my grandfather's favorite child, favorite grandchild. Right. So therefore, everybody always had a problem with me. But when right. when my grandmother came to me and took me to the funeral, right? So this is a reoccurring spiritual thing that wow. people don't really know. You know, so when Jason came to me, it really put into perspective. Now, they might not believe it, you know, because they, they are, they're not cognate to those types right. of things. The last conversation right. I told Tony, I said, Tony, I don't know if you know this, but I'm the one in the family that's a bruja, right? Now, a bruja means witch. I do spiritual work. It came to me. I, it's been like this since I was seven. I'm the one that's going to go in the kitchen, go get some herbs. You fuck with me, I'm going to put you in the freezer. I'm her, right? So right. these are these are gifts that I have that uh, when I did my my family lineage because my father's family um, they're descendants of they're Romanian and I didn't okay. know until I did research that Romanians they do a lot of spiritual work a lot of magic so it didn't come right. from my grandfather's side my grandmother and grandfather's side. it came from my father's side which is Got that it. that side right right so you know I I explained to her this but I don't think she know the magnitude but. Um, I never even really, this is my first time even saying it because it was so weird for Jason to come to me, but I knew when Jason came to me, even before you told me what he said, the mm -hmm. days leading up to his death, yeah. I knew that he had a vengeance and he wanted to, because right. he couldn't, maybe because he couldn't call me on the phone, he wanted yeah. to make sure that I yeah. knew in yeah. his, in his passing, yeah. you know, yeah. just a yeah. hey, sis. Heads Remember up. when I asked you, did you know Drew? Drew is one of the nephews, Derry's son, and he's the one Tony to raise. So he got a vengeance out for Tony because she done him wrong. And him and Drew had him and Jason hadn't seen each other in like two years because they fell out. And mm -hmm. do you know that Saturday before he hung himself that Monday? He told this is coming from his wife and Drew. This ain't no allegedly. This coming from his wife, and I can stand in court and say this. He said that he wanted his mother to suffer like he did. He said all he wanted his mother to do was be a mother, not trying to be this star. All I wanted her to do was give me love and show me love. He asked his mother for $5 that Saturday. She told him no. According to his wife, they say he talked about that shit for two days. I couldn't even get $5. I couldn't even get $5. He took his wife to dinner that Thursday before he hung himself. And he told his wife everything that happened to her. She said she couldn't understand why he telling me all this stuff. He was telling her everything that ever happened to him, bad and good. And he let everybody know he was going to take his life in California. This is a true story. And even... He came to you for a reason, because he was crying out for help. His wife said she paid $15,000 for that funeral. She said Tony had a $20,000, what do they call it, Passover, a repass, mm -hmm. and said that she did not give him her one dime for her son's funeral, that she took the money and funded her movie, the Tony Sawell story. Now, that came from Jason's wife. I can't make that up. I've never met Jason's wife in my life. Only when he mm -hmm. died, she contacted me only because Tony told her I was some lady posting Jason. But when she found out who I was, she jumped the ship. Oh, I'm with Miss Diva, right? And I stuck in there with her. I even sent her money for the girls' dresses, okay? 
okay? And that, that child sat on the phone with me for two months and told me years worth of stuff, how Tony tormented her, how they had to hide from Tony. Tony don't even know her grandkids. You notice you don't see no pictures with her grandkids. You don't see no pictures because they don't know her. I did mm. not know this. This lady stood on the phone with me for two months and told me how Tony did her for the last 13 years. Yeah. Mm. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. And I wouldn't lie on no dead man's wife. And I never met this girl. But like you said, Jason came to you for a reason. He was very hurt. Drew was with him two days before he hung himself. And he said he want his mother to suffer. That's why I'm able to say this with confidence. You notice I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. I hit this light. Um, you notice that I'm very confident saying stuff? Because it's the mm -hmm. truth. All this, all that. No, no. This is what it was. This is what it was. And I stand on it. I stand on it. I, I, I'm not going to back down from it. You know, I love Jason very much. And unfortunately, oh, I'm so sorry. This is plugged to my, um, in my apartment. This plug will not stay up. Oh, I'm not so mad about this. But um, that hurt me, girl. Yeah. I can imagine. I mean, just, just even. He even never, he never cared how his mama felt. He never got into that beef. That's why I love him. I'm going to always mm -hmm. love him to this day. He, he inboxed me. He said, Auntie, I'm going to love you always. He never let that get in the way of this beef with me and her. And his wife didn't know who my son was. And she did a tribute to Jason's funeral. She made a mm -hmm. video. The very first picture is my son, Jason and Corey. And she did not know that was my son. Mm. Yeah. And you that, know what's crazy? I've never met her. I've me either. Me I've only either. With Jason, one of Jason's daughter when my little brother was babysitting her one time. The me, oldest. I, I've never, I've never met her a day in my life. And when she called me when Jason died, and she called to cuss me out, but God turned that around. Tony said, "Told I was some girl just posted." I said, "Excuse me, I've been Jason auntie before he was born, baby. Get get off of me." I had to put her in a place. We went at it. I said, I don't know what Tony's told you, but you better know who I am. You better Google who I am. I didn't mm. play. And it turned out we wound up talking for two months. And now, of course, she went back to talking to Tony, so you know that got turned around. But you already right. said what you said. Now, I got receipts. I got right. receipts. I got pictures. I can't make none of this up. Tony sent her $100 for her daughter. She sent me the cash out picture. She sent it back to her. She said, you don't send me no daughter for no, no more money for one child. If you're not doing for all three of them, it ain't what it is. Right. So right. she got to remember all the stuff she told me in two months. You can't erase that, baby. I can take right. a lie detector test and pass it again. It is what it is. It's all about Tony and her career. She put, and my son said, that's the one thing I love about you, mama. You never put no man before every man you had did for me. I didn't play. <laughs> Girl, I didn't play. He'll tell you that even to this day. I don't play. And Tony's problem is her career is all about her. Jason had been crying out for help for three years now. She told him to go get him some help. You don't tell your son to go get help. You get him, you, you go help him. Right. She didn't do that. The wife said, Catrice, I could I was his wife. I couldn't be his mother. The girl cried out to me and said the, the boy wanted his mama. He wanted his mama. But she's so compelled on being a superstar instead of a mother. It's hurtful, girl. And yeah. you know I wouldn't sit here and tell no lie about that boy. Because right. I love me some Jason. I wouldn't sit here and tell no lie. That boy was hurt, destroyed. He told him he was going to kill himself. He told all his friends in LA, I'm gone next week like it was a damn retreat. You hear me? Mm. I can't make this up. That boy planned this murder, girl. And he told everybody he was going to do it. He let his wife know everything happened to him. 
bad and good. Mm. So what do you so what do you think as far as like when it comes to because I I do understand that you know hurt people hurt people, right? Right. And I know that Tonisa has to have some type of you know deep rooted hurt that that her mother her to be that one. Her mother was very cold. My daddy always told me that his wife was cold. She's cold hearted. Her and Tony would stay mad at each other for two and three years. I know me and my son can go at it. We was, we just reunited after two years. But I had to realize I raised that beast. But I'm still mama. You understand? Right. And um, the root come from Tony's mother. Tony's mother... She wasn't in, she wasn't a mother like that. They kind of raised themselves. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So when Tony was on drugs, she had to hurry up and get that together because her mama didn't do the babysitting. She wasn't that kind of grandmother. She wasn't like Harold's mother. She wasn't no babysitting grandmama like that. Okay. So that's okay. why Harold's mother had Corey a lot. But when Tony got on them drugs, she had to get that together because her mother said, you know damn well on babysitting. So she had to go and rehab and get that together. Yeah, that's the true story. Yeah, well, I know yeah. my dad um, actually put her in rehab. Mm hmm She went through it, and um, she got a history of not sleeping at night. Anybody that knows Tonisa knows she has to take a sleeper. She can't sleep at night because she has done so much dirt to people, so much hurt and pain. When I tell you the pain she went through, she plays it out on other people. You notice when she talk about you, she'll talk about you to hurt you and tear you down. You mm -hmm. know, like she tried to talk about me working. That's why you got to work. Don't no social security come out of horn, baby. You can't file horn on taxes. <laughs> you talking about me working, putting me down working. She got your brother saying that. He on my phone. That's why you got to work and you ain't got money like us. I can tell when it's good. I can tell if this is good and when it's your brother. I can tell when and when when it's good when it's your brother just as good. Cause he'll get to talking about you gotta work and you ain't got money like us. You can't travel like us. You gotta work. Who in the hell says that? Who says that? Right. Who says that? That ain't nothing to joke about. So what I gotta work? Ain't that what we supposed to do? Right. Okay. Cause BMF ain't it ain't it ain't working for you, baby. It ain't working for you. It ain't working for you. So a lot of things don't happen with them because BMF had a lot of stuff to cease. Okay? Mm -hmm. Every time Tony said do something, they send a lawyer letter to her telling her to cease. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I know my I brother know had know issues. That or not. The, uh, I know my brother had issues when, when um, yeah. he said Terry gave him the, um, the okay to go and trademark the logo to do the right. clothing line. But right. it makes sense now that BMF was under Meech's and there you go. three was Terry and that's where the discrepancy was with my brother. There you go. Part. There you go. Now you which see is, who's really in charge. It's really Meech. Yeah, because which, Tony is 263. But do you know that Meech and Terry wasn't speaking even before they went to jail? And she is part of that. Understand Meech you not only messed up my brother, but you disrespect my mother. What you right. thought? You disrespect Big Meech's mother. And you thought you was going to be okay? Right. He already didn't like you. Ain't no secret. And you disrespect his mother on top of it. So you can't respect your own mother, let's know somebody else's mother. Ooh, this light getting on my nerves. Right. It's this plug. It ain't my light. You notice the new light. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, so, it, 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 it was off the chain. You disrespecting that man's mama like that. That that's not gonna fly. Which, and ain't which, nobody gonna ain't nobody gonna agree with that. Oh, I'm so mad about this life. Which also and makes sense why my brother feels the need to do now. Me, my brother has never disrespected me. Um, only because I'm big sister and he know I will go the fuck off. You know, I I have seen him disrespect other people in the family. Um, even me, you know. even me, because of his mother. And she constantly have this boy on the phone, playing on people's phone, girl. 
Corey plays on people's phone for his mother. And it's a shame. I'm being honest with you. I'm not sugarcoating it. I stand on 10 toes what I said. Corey ain't never disrespect me until recently when me and his mama got into it, playing on my phone, calling me ugly, calling all these ugly names. See, yeah. but I would be wrong. Like you said, he got enough issues he dealing with and he been dealing with them issues 15 years. Let me put it on the record. I'm not going to play with you, queen. I'm not going right. to play with you. This is well, nothing I, new. I know that he'll, he'll try manipulative tactics. He'll say like my father talked talked about me um my mm. father said things because when my father went to prison the last time um tonisa was because she was mad because my father didn't give um them the porsche um that you know she was saying well your daddy said this about you and your daddy but at the end of the day i don't give a fuck who talk about me daddy mama cousin sister brother you think I give a fuck about what somebody say about me? That would mean that I care about the opinion of others, which means that I'm living my life caring about what you think about me. I don't give a fuck because at the end of the day, if I care, you would have to have financed my life for me to care. The only person I care about, two people. The man who paid my rent where I'm staying right now and my son. Them the only two people in the world that I care about what they think about me. And now if the man ain't that's funny rent, you said that. She I'm said my daddy... She said, I'm mad at her. And she's mad at me because her daddy loved me more. You sound like a damn fool. You sound like a that's damn fool. That's 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 manipulating tactics, which is comes from I think I think the consensus, you know, a lot of people like to throw around the narcissist. Um, yeah. yeah. But I think I think I think more narcissists call people narcissists. Like my ex-husband yes. called me a gaslighter and a narcissist. And I'm like, I never heard that in my life. But you right. on the other me hand, you, you give that. You know? Am I confident? Yes, the fuck I am. Do I take no bullshit? That's who I am. But am I a narcissist? I think I think I'm the shit. But every I, everybody should feel that way. I want Hello? And I want to be around people that think that. I don't want to be around somebody that I feel like you bigger than me. If you want That's me right. to belittle myself, when I'm when I'm around you and make you bigger than me, then I'm in the wrong room. Cause ain't and nobody. That's where I'm at. The tone. Yeah. She likes people beneath her, not over her. She don't want you up there with her. She gonna make sure you stay beneath her. Anybody that know her know I'm telling the truth. They know this. They don't want to admit it. Like you said, you 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 drive a lot of memories. When you said she got all these family members. My son say, mama, that girl know exactly what she's talking about. She say they're going to look like a damn fool when it's all said and done. She got all these family members running up behind her thinking they're going to get rich or get a part in one of her movies and all that. If y'all was going to get anything, y'all would have been got it. She went through all them millions of dollars. Nobody got nothing. No nothing. businesses. No, no and, and businesses. You know what? It's and that's a sad thing, too, because if you look at all of these other successful, I'll say, crime families, they have stores, grocery stores, laundromats, yeah. businesses, yeah. real estate. Yeah. If you look yeah. at the Kennedys, you know, yeah. if you look yeah. at the Trumps, yeah. you know, you look oh, at, I'm sorry. at if you look at the, if you look at BMF, you notice everybody got something but her family. Mm -hmm. Come on. She's so I mean, famous. even She's in my so father's this. family, to be honest, even in my father's family, my father made all that money um, and none of his sisters own the business. His brother don't own the business. His children, their college wasn't paid for. I wasn't I, I wasn't like how I got my business, to be uh, completely honest. I was fucking with an NFL player who was married, who gave me the money. So I, so I got my money. I got my business off my back. That's you right. Know? I That's utilized right. my hustle to get him to give me the business. You know, I had right. to, no daddy gave me this, you know. That's right. So and that's what I, I tell people. Tonisa did for us the way she did for groupies. My mother made it, her mother made a statement to her. You did more for the groupies than you did for your own family. So when your mama say that to you, come on, queen. Tony did mm -hmm. more for the outside people than she did her family. And I'm being honest with you. And it speaks for itself. Because nobody, like I said, their houses didn't get paid for. They had to do a short sale in the condo in Vegas and the house in the Ypsilanti, a short sale. 
So for you to make all these videos about this, 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 I'ma say it again. Judge Mathis and Vivica Fox should have did their damn homework because that bio is a bunch of lies and I stand on it. I, I mean, I thought it. it was, you know what, I'ma be, I'm I'm gonna do my Cat Williams and I'm gonna do my 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 Monique big one, right? And I'm gonna say right. this. I believe from just from being in the industry. Okay, of course, Vivica did it with vengeance because 50 Cent did the part, and I'm pretty sure they had right. a little mad, mad woman moment. You know, Vivica does not give me a girl's girl. She seems very cold. She seems very bitter. She seems very condescending. Judge Mathis, yep. he just want to be a part of something, right? In the event that the, the greatest accolade that y'all can get is, and we talked about this before, the NAACP. Now, I believe that the NAACP acknowledging a film about drugs, sex, right. you know, um, crime, to, to right. bring that to the NAACP right. um, is really, really, really uh, devalues and dilutes what the NAACP stand for. But what yeah. I can say is, it's low-hanging fruit, okay? Yeah. People, please yeah. understand that that's low-hanging fruit. And call it right. shade, call it whatever... I'm not, right. I'm not jealous in no no right. type of way because baby, if I do something, if it ain't going right. to Cannes, if it ain't right. going to the Oscars, if it ain't going to the Emmys, if I ain't getting a Grammy Award, if I ain't getting a British Award, if I I'm not pressed about no NAACP. And another thing too, with a lot of what with a lot of these people, and this is not just Tonisa, but this is just a lot of people that's in the entertainment business. I live abroad, so I live in Turkey. They ain't heard about you. These Nigerians, these Indians, these Pakistanians, these uh, people from Kenya, they don't know shit about no BMF. Do they know right. about Pablo Escobar? Do they know about Griselda Blanco? Do they know about Frank Lewis? Frank Lucas? They do. They don't know nothing Thank about that because it's the nigga. That's the, it was Atlanta five. You know what I'm saying? That I was the nest. You know, it right. wasn't a real movement. Pablo Escobar real made made real moves he was going against politicians right right doing doing things that people wish they could do the guy boston george you know so people even need to realize like i was watching i was watching uh, um the fanny will the fanny willis and this is kind of like a little sidebar but i was watching the fanny uh willis case which is the the da in atlanta um, she's on trial for misconduct. She was the one that's that's doing this stuff against Trump and okay. um and and Young Thug. So she the one brought up the Trump case and the and the Rico for Young Thug. So she okay. did her testimony, right? And she was very, for lack of a better term, ghetto. She was niggerish. She was responding like, "Cause what am I on trial? He said he need a G. If he tell me he need a G, did I give him a thousand? She's really saying this on trial, right? I seen and I that. Read the comments. And the people were like, yeah, she ate them up. Yes, sis. Yes, sis. And it made me think about how ignorant. This is why I left America. Because Tony said, you can't come back to America. No, this is why I won't come back to America. Because it's a bunch of women in their 50s and in their 60s who, these ain't the grandmas. These these ain't the grandmas that was born in 1920. These are some ghetto-ass birds who think being disrespectful who yeah. think being a feminist yeah. and who think yeah. being that sassy, yeah, because I'm this and I don't need a nigga for this. Right. That's the type of that's the type of environment I don't want to be in. And it's right. sad because these girls are praising these old women because they feel like they got to look up to these people. Well, she yeah. did it, so this is how I'm gonna look up to. And it's like y'all don't even realize what y'all how y'all even being programmed for the NAACP to take somebody and give them a platform. Who, who who brings this type of energy says a That's lot right. about the state of what's going on with black America and, and they're co-signing that bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and like you said, too. everything she do, if you go back and look at everything she do, she tear down women. She, the yeah. same thing she said to you, she said to me. Now, how many of us is fat, black, and ugly? How many? Right. You her stepdaughter and I'm her stepsister. Huh? And if you can tear us two down... How many more you tear down? Right. How many and more? This, exactly. And this is my thing too. You could call me fat. You could call me black. You could call me ugly. You could call me broke. You could right. call me all that. But what you won't call me, you won't call me uneducated. You won't call me. Uh, and you won't call me a liar. 
And you right. won't call me a you liar. Ain't call me, you ain't gonna call me a liar. You can call me anything. That's anything. I mean, people, in, people in the comments say that shit. You know what I'm saying? People, people who don't even know me say that type of stuff. And if you feel like I got okay, so what? Because you ain't seen I got red bottoms. So because because based on you having red bottoms makes means you got money. I got red bottoms, but that don't mean shit. You 60, <laughs> do you own land? Because I'm gonna say. To you, you could call me broke because I ain't doing what you doing, but I'm gonna ask you as a 60 year old woman, do you own land? Because you had all this money. How many cars right. do you own? How many RIAs do you own? Where right. where pension you got from this? You doing film? What production companies do you have? There's a lot of things that people really need to be talking about if you want to come right. to somebody. But you right. got people like Fannie Willis, you got people like Tonisa making these people think, yeah, it's cool and this how you should be. Get, no. Getting smart and being disrespectful, and and right. to be honest, you you fucked your husband's boy, who your husband put on is yep. documented that your husband taught this man how to cook crack because he was yep. a younger man. You this who you would slept with to create this to and create you glor this. and you glorifying this like it's nothing, like you 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 did a bio, you went with your you married to him. And you start going with his partner, drug partner, and you glorifying right. like, like you telling the young girls it's okay to go with your. That's not okay. That's nasty. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, somebody in my comments said, "Um, well, I was in, I was in um prison with her, and she was just the sweetest in and out." Let me say this to you, my mom, because I didn't even address her, right? But I'm but I'm gonna address that lady that was in my comments. You gotta realize that if she's in prison, she gotta play nice, right? Amen. Cause, Amen. Cause you, gotta, cause, you, cause, you, Cause you can get your ass kicked, you can get murdered. Also, you got a bunch of groupies in there who riding off of the oh, this BMF, this the queen pin, blah blah blah. blah. So y'all clout chasing. You know because, something else I wanted to clear with you. The reason why your brother disrespects so much, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to put it out there to you. When you're a mother of a son, you can't be sleeping with your, your son's friends. You can't. And that was one of the things Jason brought up and Drew brought up, and your brother. When you just slept with all their friends, I teach my son, whenever you see a son that disrespects their mother the way your brother disrespects his mama, I'm going to put it out there. It's because she slept with their friends. See, boys don't understand my mama sleeping with my friends. You can sleep with somebody, but when you got a son out here, you and I both know, you got to hold some kind of respect because that boy is not going to understand that. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying, baby? When you sleep with your son's friends like that, that's why your, your brother talked to her the way he does. Let me just put that out there. You lose respect. You cannot sleep with your son's friends and think you're going to be mother of the year. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Right. I couldn't even imagine sleeping with my son friend. That's just like, Yo! that's that's wild to me. I mean, even, even when men that are in there, because there was a guy 29, 30 that wanted to marry me. And I'm like, my son is 24. What can you do for me? Right. What in the world could you ever do for me? And you in the same matter of fact, I remember a guy tried to date me and he had the same shoes that I bought my son. I said, No, I bought my son them shoes. You wear the same shoes as my son. I can't fuck with you. Now, now you know my daddy was the biggest H in Detroit. And um he slept with a lot of my friends. I promise you. Between my <laughs> brothers and my son and my daddy, they went through them. But do you know not one of their friends was good enough for me? Mm -hmm. and do you know Terry thinks the world of me he always trying to find me a husband because I'm the sister that keeps a clean house and know how to cook real good so that's why they thought I had money because Terry would come to my house and eat because he said Tony girlfriends had nasty houses <laughs> uh, and that's believe. a true story that's a true story well, you know, I think that um, we we got we got more to come. You know, right? I don't know how long we've been on here, but we definitely um, uh, we definitely two hours. Don't have to do. Oh, we've been on here for two hours. I enjoy you. I can talk to you for hours. It don't seem like it's 
hasn't been two hours. No, let me see what it says. An hour and 44 minutes. Oh, well, two hours. Two hours it is. Well, but no, we're going to have to break this up because we're going to have to do part okay. two. Um, okay. Because part two, we're going to have to get into the real. Because I look, that's what we're going to get into the real. We just did a little a little intro for y'all. So y'all can okay. stay, stay stay tuned. You know what I'm saying? Because this is, look, y'all thought club Shay Shay had the tea. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You thought club Shay Shay had the tea. Well, you know what I'm saying? We just hit to just we just hit to just do our big one. You know what I'm saying? The truth is out because because my whole thing is I'm not about to keep making a bunch of TikToks addressing this lady. I'm gonna sit down, have a, a conversation. I'm a grown ass woman. So if you want to go toe to toe, this how I go toe to toe. Now if you want to, if Tony said if you want to make something to address this after this, which I'm sure you probably gonna want to say something, but you really can't because you ain't even seen part two. It is so. what it is. Let me say one more thing to you. She told the whole world that me and my son sold some fur coats from her. Some of the coats your dad bought for her. She had about five or six mean coats. Mm -hmm. So let me just put this out here. This is one of the biggest stories, baby. <coughs> she told them that I sold her fur coats. I went into the family home and sold her fur coats. Well, her brother, Ernest, it took for him to be going with this girl. He only been going with her two years. The story is 15 years old. Guess who sold the coat? <laughs> her very own brother sent one of his weak girlfriends in that was friends of the family and sold her coat and pawned them at Zygmunt's down on Gratiot. Mm. And when I got in her ass about it and say, yeah, you went and told the whole world that I stole your damn coats. But when we found out your own brother stole them, oh, I ain't worried about them coats. Oh, no, 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 no. She been telling that lie on your girl for the last four years. Let me put it out there. Her own brother, drug addict brother, stole her fur coats and pawned them down at Zygmunt in Detroit for $5,000. He pawned over $100,000 worth of coats. I'm going to put that out there because you can call me whatever you want to call me. But what you won't do is lie on my name. Your own brother stole your fur coats out the family's house and pawned them down at the pawn shop. And do you know she been letting that lie roll on me and my son for the last four years? Not going to happen. Right. Put that in the bio. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm excited for part two, so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do some recaps. But I gotta edit this up, chop it up, chop and screw. Cause thank you, beautiful. Be, this is gonna be a good one. I'm excited. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you because I want people to know that these are two ladies that's come together about the same woman that don't even know each other. Me and you just met, and we met because our videos sent to each other. Right. But nobody believe this. They don't think, right. man, I just met you and been knowing your dad 40 years. And me and you got the same story. Both of us can't be lying, baby. Right. I'm too old. I'll be 60 this year. That's why I told you your stepmama, she'll be 63. You better get that age right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, you know, I'm happy that I met you. You know, you too um, beautiful, and you are so beautiful. Look at you. Thank you. You are so beautiful, looking like your brother. No, you look like your dad. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your compliments. So, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this chopped and screwed. Uh, my son okay. called me because he done went went on a job and he didn't take on. He got eighty thousand dollars worth of product that he didn't got because he he does junk removal. Um, and moving and, and they just contracted him to um, empty out a, a, a hospital and they told him okay. anything in the hospital he can have so he looking at coolers and air conditions and all kinds of so he just sent me wow. a bunch of pictures I gotta go look at him he was FaceTiming me when we were talking so I'm gonna talk to my son and then okay. in three hours my man will be coming home from work so I got to do my do my, my little housewife due diligence um, okay and do what I got to do here, but I appreciate you. You know, we'll probably talk uh, a little bit, a little bit late. I know we 11 hours apart, so. Right. So it's all good, but uh, I'm happy okay. for us to do this. I cannot wait for the next one. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you so much. 
I, I just love you already. I just love you already. You. I can't wait. I love you too. I love you too. So, all right, we'll you. talk later. Okay, sweetie. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, sweetie.